Last time on Taking the Lunge. If they're going to take 30 minutes, that, that 30 minutes could be better spent uh, if they get the guidance and the, and the expert opinion of a personal trainer. Don't teach me what I already know. Challenge me, give me something new, something fresh, keep me engaged. You know, I'm at the point now where I am motivated enough and I'm at least experienced enough in you know, exercising and working out that I know how to do the exercises. I just need someone to literally put the blueprint in front of me each week and say, this is what you have to do and all I have to do is get my butt to the gym and do it. The biggest thing actually might even be discipline. Just making myself do it and then I'm getting better at that. I have the attention span of a pea, so that's challenging for my trainer because I, I don't like to repeat exercises because I get bored. So it's kind of like, okay, next, give me one exercise. You can target the same muscle group. And I like working with Julie because she basically breaks it down for me. She tells me, she tells, all I have to do is follow it. You know, like she tells me how many to do, you know, what weights to use. This is the story of five people embarking on a unique fitness journey to achieve their individual goals for better health and wellness. Through the expert guidance of their own personal trainer, each is learning how to fit fitness into their everyday life and is taking the lunge toward a healthier lifestyle. This is pretty exciting. Fitness means to me that you know you feel good about yourself. Um, obviously, being an athlete my whole life, I've been used to being active, and it's just something that you can't really stop once you've been used to it because it becomes a daily part of your life. So fitness has uh, always been part of my life, from dance right through fitness. It seems like um, I've made time for everything but myself and my fitness. I've never done a Weight Watchers or Jenny Craig. Most of what I've uh, what I've done has been more like short term you know, diets like, you know, two or three weeks before some kind of event or something and pretty much, pretty much just been, you know, cutting out carbs. Then, because I was in my mid-twenties, I just had to eat a little bit better and exercise every single day. And just by doing that, I was able to lose 13 pounds in about eight weeks. And of course, I was able to gain it right back shortly thereafter because everything good I was doing then just went out the window because I had a really short-term goal. My short-term goal, lose 10 pounds in eight weeks, and then after that, all bets are off. My mom was obese, and she was at five two. She was almost three hundred pounds, and uh, you know she had uterine cancer at thirty three. She's had you know ovarian cancer at forty seven. She had you know a lump removed from her breast. She's had a kidney transplant. She has all the diseases that are you know sort of our population suffers from: diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, a stroke. She she's still alive, by the way. Thank God, because I'm not ready to lose her. Fitness is not just a, a three month thing a six month thing, a nine month thing, a year. It's something that you should do for a lifetime because that's what's gonna keep you healthy and, and keep, you, keep you doing all the things even into your, your golden years. I think when you get into like your 30s and things like that and you start uh, thinking, you know, your life gets bigger, you know, the world gets bigger, you know, there's, you know, mortgages and jobs and everything, you know, the first thing that people do is they take away things that have to do with themselves because they're so worried about everything else around them. But Seeing her go through this so young to me was sort of a, you know, I don't want that. How do I change that? But I didn't, I didn't know how. And the only way in which I know how to control my eating was to not eat. You know, like so many other people that don't make it a part of their permanent lifestyle, as soon as the marathon was done, I gained a ton of weight back. You know, anything they lost and more, I gained back because I kept the bad eating habits, I kept eating too much. But I wasn't running anymore, I wasn't doing the exercise. I need to have a goal and he had something I'm training for for me to go out for a run. And so by the time I was 13, I picked up dance and I was enamored with dance and so I wanted to look like these other little girls did and I didn't. And I stopped eating and I developed an eating disorder. I became anorexic. I want to feel good about myself and I want to look good and um, at the same time, I'm not looking to be very buff, you know, I just want to be toned and, like I said, feel good about myself every day. Now, you know, it's, it's much more focused on, you know, a longer term meal plan, not necessarily a diet. I guess, I guess you could call it a diet compared to, you know, what I would be eating, you know, if I didn't have any kind of plan in place. Um, but it's, it's tough, I mean, it continues to be a, a struggle. I don't know how many people this, this feel this way too, but when you're younger, 
you work out and you get really fit, right? And you can kind of live off of that fitness for a long time, right? When you're like in your early 20s and you live off of that fitness for six to eight months, right? As you get older, you work out this week and you miss two, three workouts in the week. And it's almost like, have you ever used those, like um, open those packets of biscuits and when you poke them on the side, all the stuff starts popping out. Have you seen that before? <laughs> That's how I feel sometimes. And this time I mean it. I really want to make it a permanent lifestyle change where I'm exercising something every day. You know, whether it's an inner train workout, I did a 50 mile bike ride this morning, if it's going for a run, if it's doing some cardio at the gym, swimming, doing a workout on my own. I want to do a little bit of something every day. You should be thinking about yourself you know, and your health first, and then everything else should fall in line. Um, because I'm noticing little things, like um, a lot of times I work evenings or, you know, anything that I have, like appointments or anything, or like later in the day. So uh, I sleep late, you know, I would be like, you know, in bed to like, you know, 10 or 11. Well, now that I'm exercising and I have more energy, you know, I'm, I'm waking up like at 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning, you know, and I want to get started, you know, like I feel like I, you know, my day needs to get started. So that's what's exciting about it. So the reality is what I used to do. I'd go to Florida, I'd lose some weight. I'd come back, I'd gain it. Go to Florida, lose weight, get in shape, come back, gain it. So this time, because I really hit my goal of getting to that size six, so when I came back, no way I'm gaining it. It's maintaining it. And maybe when I go back to Florida at the end of month or the month, which is what I try to do, I'll just take off a little more because I'll have concentrated fitness. In order to incorporate fitness into your life, it requires a commitment, which is best uh, done with a partner or having a personal trainer because they can actually hold you accountable and keep you on track. You know, everybody's going to have a little bit of a threshold in terms of, you know, cheating a little bit. You know, it's just, you can't, you literally can't, you know, absolutely eat um, everything you intend to, every meal, like, forever. Like, it, it, there's going to be curved well, there's going to be a time when you're on an airplane or you're in another country or you're in a meeting or, or, or at a party or you just need to eat something. Um, and the key is, is, you know, just what is the healthiest choice, you know, I can make within, within reason. And I feel like when I don't work out, it's like somebody's poking me with a fork and the bit stuff starts coming out on the side. And so it's kind of a good motivation to, you know, get back on track because my fitness does not last as long as someone who is younger. So it's important that I stay on track and that I, you know, continue to do it and not just, um, you know, do it right now and then, you know, fall off the wagon and come back two years later. How did this happen? I was so fit. You know, it happens one day at a time. Just like I did not gain this weight or I did not make this change overnight, you know, I'm not going to transition back overnight and I cannot pretend that I will fall off the wagon and not see changes, you know, as it may, in the opposite direction of where I want to see them. Hi, I'm Chris Freitag, National Health and Fitness Expert. There are tons of whey protein products out there today, so why choose Bipro? Bipro is lactose-free. Bipro is flavorless. Bipro contains no artificial sweeteners. Bipro is an isolate. That means it has a higher purity level than a concentrate. Bipro is carb-free. For more information, go to BiproUSA.com. I mean, historically speaking, I've struggled with my weight basically my whole life. You know, I grew up in a family that likes to eat, and likes to eat food that isn't necessarily healthy. I'm not blaming who I am today on that or anything like that, but that's basically, that's my history. We fried food was good, lots of desserts, lots of cakes, lots of really fatty food is, is what we liked. Um, and so, you know, I've been working out, I participated in athletics when I was in high school, junior high and high school. 
and that helped keep me in shape because you're doing it as part of a sport, you're not doing it just to work out, just to lose weight. And of course you go away to college, you put on the freshman 15, or at least I did, and uh, you know, you're on your own, you're eating too much, you're drinking too much. That's when I really learned that I need to control what I'm doing and to regularly go to a gym to try to keep in shape. To lead a truly healthful life forever, basically, you want to think of uh, your life as a circle. And there's three components to that circle. The physical, nutritional, and recreational. The physical is your hard workouts that you do two to three times a week. The recreational is something you do for fun, like doing a yoga class, taking a bike ride, going for a swim, throwing a frisbee, uh, going on a nice long walk or a hike. Uh, those help mentally as well. And then the nutritional is obviously your eating habits and putting them all together and, and staying on the healthy path. And then I went through a couple times when I was able to lose weight relatively quickly. Uh, but the first time was in my mid-20s and three of us did a weight loss bet. It may seem silly, but we did a weight loss bet where we were trying to lose 10 pounds. And you know, fortunately, I was the one who did lose 10 pounds. One guy, I lost 13, one guy lost about five, one gained three. We gave up early. And, and the way I did it then, because I was in my mid-20s, I just had to eat a little bit better and exercise every single day. And just by doing that, I was able to lose 13 pounds in about eight weeks. And of course, I was able to gain it right back shortly thereafter, because everything good I was doing then just went out the window because I had a really short-term goal. My short-term goal, lose 10 pounds in eight weeks, and then after that, all bets are off, literally this time. And uh, I did it a couple more times in my later 20s and early 30s where I get into an exercise routine or get into, you know, I have a short-term goal where I was able to, to make some changes, make some improvements in my life. And I, I wasn't just losing weight, I was getting fitter. There, there's no doubt about it, a couple of times. You know, I found in my, my later 20s that weight resistance training, weight lifting, is also really important for losing fat. Uh, it may not show as much on the scale, but you can definitely see it when you're losing inches around your waist or just absolutely being fitter. And um, you know, those times, it was a little more, um, stuck with me a little bit longer. At the same time, it still was short term, and as soon as the holidays would come around or I'd lose focus, I'd gain the weight right back. From the get-go, I knew he was going to be um, you know, in charge, able to fit in his workouts. Um, he gave me a timeline at the very beginning when we started working out together, you know, training together. So, um, you know, his has been a twice a week with me. Um, he's been very religious with it. He's been very persistent with his workouts. I also found, and maybe I touched on this, that the first time, all I had to do was do cardio every day and eat a little bit better, and I was able to lose weight. It takes more than that the older you get. Your metabolism slows down. You've got to work, I've, got, I've got to work at it harder to make some positive impact. I mean, so the, the thing that I did the first time, I tried it a couple years later, and I was seeing absolutely no results. You know, I, I needed to work a lot harder. I couldn't just eat a little bit better. I couldn't just do 20 minutes of cardio a day. I needed to do a lot more than that. Heavy lifting weights, really working hard while I was doing it, and um, eating a lot better to, to see any results having groceries, fresh vegetables, fresh fruit, uh, high quality foods in the house so I don't come home and say, well, there's nothing to eat here. I'll go over and grab a 800 calorie vanilla shake or get myself a little pizza which has probably 10,000 calories in it or something like that. You know, make sure that I've got healthy options at all times so that I don't have the excuse. I've got to convince myself it is a lifestyle change. It's not just something I'm doing for the for the show here, it's not just something I'm doing for the wedding or for the honeymoon or for whatever. I've got to convince myself that. Plus, I need to surround myself with healthier choices. And he's a busy man too. He's very busy, um, busy life. You know, especially planning his wedding and, and his job's very um, challenging for him too. So he's got um, a good schedule and, and he sticks with it. He fits it in. He doesn't ever um, stop. He doesn't ever um, not fit it in to his schedule. You know. Marrying a triathlete is a big motivation. You know, the fact that she's able to get up and you know, go for a swim a couple times a week, go for a run a couple times a week, go for a bike ride, not quite as often, but uh, does all of these things. I want to be able to do some of those with her. You know, maybe not to run so much, definitely not to swim, but the bike ride is good. She, she is extremely active, so I'd like to be able to keep up with her. Um, you know, she's done half Ironman competitions. 
her majority of her friends are either have either done Ironmans or half Ironmans or looks some sort of triathlons or they run marathons or they, they do runs together. It, it's it's part of her social circle, and for me to fit in, it's important for me to at least be able be able to, to go for a bike ride with them and keep up. To be able to you know go for a run every once in a while. I'm not going to run another marathon. Set it there. It's on video. It's not going to happen. Um, I may I may do a short triathlon someday, you know, because I do enjoy the biking. I enjoy shorter runs, and um, well, I need to learn to swim for distance. You know, swimming for me is like a sprint, but that's a different issue. Um, but, but but to be able to, to do some of these things and to, to to hang with that social circle, I think is 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 important for me. We've talked about do I care if he does triathlons, which I don't care. Um, I want him to like support me in doing that. Um, but I really would like him to be able to go out and go for bike rides or go for a run because mm -hmm. um, I, I want him to be there for a long time and I guess it brings me so much joy that my hope is that if we can get into a routine, I think the hard part is getting into the habit. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily maintaining the habit, it's building the habit because once you have that energy from it, then my hope is that will help it um, continue on. Mm -hmm. He needs to make this, you know, a lifestyle change and, and make it about the rest of his life. I mean, he's about to get married. He's about to start another part of his life that's super important. You know, he's, again, he's made great strides so far. He's made great changes um, nutrition-wise. Um, he's definitely gotten a, a heck of a lot stronger. Eating habits is where I, I, I haven't shown a whole lot of progress, and I need to, I need to make some progress there. I haven't gotten to the point where I'm, I'm not craving high protein, low fat foods. I'm not craving, you know, low sugar, whole grains. I, I, I still like my bad for your food. So <laughs> that's a place where I want to show some improvement. I'll be honest. And, and it's the way I was raised, I mean, we, we we love, covet bad for your food in my family. And especially when I get together with them, it's it's not. Oh, here, let's 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 have a really healthy meal. It's kind of like, uh, why are you only having one burger? Is something wrong? Why did you get half a milkshake? You should have gotten a full milkshake. It's more economical. So, um, yeah, my, my history has been very much geared toward high fat, high sugar foods, and I know that I need to improve that. So I think for us, the infrastructure mm. is being dedicated or have a routine on the weekends. Mm where we go through that process of kind of thinking ahead through the week since we both work, what are we going to have for dinner on certain nights so that you don't get home and say, okay, what's for dinner? Because as soon as what's for dinner, well, the things that are right down the street become mm -hmm. the easy thing that that's for dinner versus, okay, it's Tuesday, and on Tuesday we were going to have Asian salad. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big fan of crash diet or exercise programs simply because they don't focus on the long term. Now, if you have it to get ready for a wedding or a, or a reunion or something, then they might serve uh, a purpose. But usually, you end up gaining more weight back after you stop because it's too hard of a program to maintain, and sometimes you might even get injured, which is even worse. Stick to a, stick to a, just a more sensible approach that you can live with long term. Again, just thinking about what he's doing before it happens and making the smart choices and knowing those choices are um, something that he's going to have to to make and always make for the rest of his life to reduce stress to reduce you know any of the his you know high blood pressure or high cholesterol or any of those things that are going to um, be a factor in someone's life exercise nutrition um, are key and you and you've got to have them in your life. Oh, the good thing for us is the wedding's in October and the honeymoon's not until March. So there's no getting fat right after the wedding. Well, we got the honeymoon in New Zealand coming up uh, several months later, so I've got to keep in shape for that. <laughs> um, it's a joke. Um, you know, I, I want to turn this into a lifestyle where I'm, you know, someone who is active and is in shape all the time. I don't want to be someone that's afraid to take his shirt off at the beach. I know it's vanity, but it's true. I don't want to go down on the beach and be the guy that wants to keep his shirt on because, well, because. I think that the challenge is going to be making sure that Mark understands that this is a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That maybe we're going to have to come up with some other short-term interim goals, mm -hmm. or always having a goal. Right. Trying to make it not so much that it feels like a punishment to try and eat healthy right. or to exercise, 
that it's something that's empowering something, and right. that it's positive, mm -hmm. that it's something that you want to continue, not so much, oh, this was such a hardship or such a challenge, thank goodness it's done, mm -hmm. that it just, it's just routine. Right. So maybe we're just going to have to continue finding skinny jeans or skinny pants or whatever mm -hmm. it is that you've talked about, mm -hmm. that we're always going to have those. I, I want to convince myself that's important. I mean, there's some people in the office that they, they've made it a habit to even go for a walk over lunch, and they go for a couple mile walk as, as a way to burn calories without having to go to the gym, without having to, you know, get all sweaty, because you would this summer, but the yeah. rest of the year you can do that without uh, having to take three hours out of your day. And, and, and I need to improve that. I need to get to the point where I'm, do, I'm doing that every day, or, or frankly, most days. But, but not, and not, not just for those activities. If we're on vacation and we're at a location where we're going to go hiking, I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to be, you know, watching her walk along and I'm, <gasps> you know, after 20 minutes or so, I'm losing my breath. I can't keep up. I want to, I want to, I want to be healthy. I want to be fit. I want to, I want to be able to keep up. I want to, well, I want to be leading actually, but <laughs> one step at a time. At least I want to be able to keep up. And you know, it, it's a concern when you're with someone who who's, competes in activities. And um, I don't, I don't want it to be a concern. I want it to be something that's like, yeah, I got this. Yeah, he's here napping. Just another hard day of online poker. No, he didn't win. Most days he doesn't win. But he has that dog sitting gig now and that's going. It's going. And he got called in for jury duty last Sarah. week. So. I was on fire. I was on fire. Still here. <laughs> yeah, it happened again. Catalyst Ranch is a creative meetings and events space in the heart of Chicago's West Loop. Catalyst Ranch offers two floors and over 9,000 square feet of distinctive meeting and event spaces to delight your senses and spark your imagination. Catalyst Ranch is also the perfect place for a one-of-a-kind special event. Catalyst Ranch creates a customized experience for all. Visit Catalyst Ranch. Waltz over here and you'll jitterbug back. because I've always been involved with something fitness like I've been dancing since I was four and then I enjoyed a career as a dancer I was in fitness and then I won I owned my health club and I was an aerobic instructor and traveled the country I was always involved in fitness but I think the, those years the reasons were different they were my career it's what I did I like it it kind of gives me a chance to uh, kind of uh, pull my head together and um, think about the rest of my day and kind of just take a breather from life. Think of fitness as a marathon and not a sprint. Just take little steps and make, make those steps permanent in your life. Improve only 1% a day, which is not much, but in 100 days you've totally changed your life. My aspirations are to continue working out regularly, continue pushing myself and um, being a healthier person so I can live a very long, happy life. I, I think I've mentioned this before, but for us, you know, fitness is not something that we want to do for a season. It's something that we want to incorporate for a lifetime. It's oftentimes it's the last thing that I get to in my day, right? Like I've dealt with a hundred other things in the day, and then it's nine o'clock, I'm exhausted. I haven't seen a friend, I haven't called anybody in my family, I haven't seen my partner. There's probably lots of other things I should do, but because this is like my big goal right now, like I've got to make this part the next priority. It just has to happen. It's a little, little jewel inside the city, little park area where you can get away from the, the monotony for a little while. It's, it's part of our family, it's something that we want to build as a legacy for our children, right? So it's not just you know, that I'm doing this challenge today because we're on camera, but it's really, truly something that we want our children to learn, to incorporate, to understand that it is important and that you must, you know, incorporate into whatever your lifestyle is. All of us are in the same boat. I mean, you can start a program and even reach your goal, but then what are you going to do after that? You know, are you just going to stop? Are you going to stop working with the trainer? Are you going to stop going to the gym? 
um, just because you're set and, you're, and you've actually you know, met your goals, um, most of us need to make another goal. I, I want to enjoy the, the golden years, if that's what it is. You know, I, I don't want to be you know, working until I'm 65 and then be in either horrible shape or not live very long after that because I haven't taken care of myself. So you have to break the cycle, like what, what's going to be the trigger and for which generation is going to trigger that change? You know, and I believe that it's us, it can be us, right? That we trigger that change for our families and for our communities, right? At this stage of life, it's my choice because as I said, I'm, you know, I'm in that last, uh, I'm in the third quarter. I'm not in the third third because that would be my last third. I didn't like that. I'm in the third quarter. So I like to think that now, I, I know, I don't think, it's all about health and longevity. It's good to know that you're not, you're not alone in these struggles, that there's other people out there um, with you that go through these same things. Um, so I'm, I'm re-energized and re-inspired, so here I am at almost 11.30 at this point, doing this um, video confessional. And uh, knowing that I can do this, that there's other people out there um, that are with me, and uh, I'm looking forward to the changes, to the changes in my lifestyle. Uh, I'm smarter. I, I know what I eat and how I exercise is definitely going to prolong my life and that's what I'm all about now and that's my goal. I want to, you know, I, I want to, I when I retire, someone who is active, you know, can play tennis until he's 90. I can, you know, well, golf doesn't take much energy so you can probably do that, but, you know, do that and do that well, not be someone who needs a cart or needs, you know, to, I can play nine holes, but 18, uh, it's, just, it's just too long for me. I, I, I want to have an active life for, for a very long time. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. We have a special episode planned for you guys for the season finale. After the show, we're going to be sitting with the cast broadcasting live right here from our studio. And they'll be answering your questions, so submit them now via Facebook or Twitter or during the show directly on our live stream chat. Doesn't get any more interactive than that, does it? It doesn't. And keep sending us your lunges. Post them on our Facebook wall because we want to include them in the final credits. It's your last chance. So don't forget to tune in next week at 8 p.m. Central Time.